بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علمك رحمتك يا أرحم الراحم Oh, Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to uh, start another chapter in our Monday sessions. As you know, we finished uh, the book Practical Method of, Methods of Self-Purification by the late Ayatollah Shujai. And I thought a lot about what would be good book to study after that we have already alhamdulillah studied few books so finally I decided to uh, study together Adab Salat by late Imam Khomeini uh, this is very valuable book and we alhamdulillah had about uh, I think 17 sessions on this book uh, for uh, Rasalat Saturday courses uh, but uh, still we are at the beginning of the book so we are uh, still in Muqaddimatus Salat about Tahara so it needs many many sessions so I thought uh, this would be a good inshallah group to carry on with the study of this valuable book uh, this book is available in Farsi and Arabic I don't know if it is translated in English I'm not aware uh, uh, sorry I'm not aware if it is uh, available online uh, we have the hard copy but uh, online I don't know Maybe you can find, inshallah, because sometimes you search that someone finds, someone doesn't find. Uh, I give you a breakdown of the uh, book. Alexander okay, so yeah, maybe it was, uh, yeah, I made it mistaken with another book. Alhamdulillah, because I, maybe I have put actually reference to it in the uh, uh, YouTube description of earlier lectures. Alhamdulillah, so then the English translation available, we have also hard copy. Uh, we have it in Qom and in uh, London if someone wants so can you see the page from the website yes you can see it. okay uh, so this is the website imam dash khomeini dot ir adab salat this is different from Serro Salat, which is shorter version. So Imam Khomeini wrote Serro Salat for scholars. This one he wrote it for non-scholars as well, but it still is very scholarly. So there is an introduction. Then the first section comes in different chapters. The first section is what we should observe about all acts of worship and in particular Salat. So he has few introductory discussions about uh, stations of the wayfarers, about khushu and humbleness, about protecting your ibadah from shaitan, about necessity of doing ibadat with joy excitement not you know without positive feeling about making yourself understand what you say and what you do Tafhim. about presence of heart uh, there are several chapters about presence of heart 
and uh, actually here I expanded and I used uh, some other materials to talk about how to have control of your uh, mind control of khayal and about the roots of having no concentration then the second section is about muqaddimat uh, prerequisites of salat the things that we have to bring before starting salat and the first is about tahara so there is discussion about tahara different levels of it and what should we do when we look at water uh, and about uh, water and soil which we use for wuzu or tayammum some of the manners of wuzu so up to here we have discussed and uh, you can find it on youtube there is a playlist which has all of them up to here and up to here it is 17 lectures uh, then what we need to start with today is chapter 6 about ghosl and some of the uh, spiritual manners then about removing najasa from body and clothes then the next section uh, is about some of the spiritual manners of uh, clothes uh, of the one who prays uh, and there are some discussions about this then there is about place the space that you use for saying your prayer uh, then about time then about qibla istiqbal then about muqarinat so we had muqaddamat muqarami do things which uh, happen and coincide with the salat uh, for example adhan and iqama and there are lots of discussions about adhan and iqama and then about uh, takbirat about ikhlas about qira'a recitation ista'adha a'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim about bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim lots of beautiful discussions and then a little discussion about tafsir of surah al-hamd and surah inna uh, anzalna then about ruku some of the secrets and manners of ruku and then sujood then tashahud then salam and then at the end uh, there is something about ta'qibat like uh, the du'as do you make after salat so it's very comprehensive book mashallah and I hope inshallah we all benefit from this book and may, inshallah improve our salat okay today our discussion is about ghus and its manners which relate to the heart its a spiritual manners maybe some people think ghusl is just a matter of washing the body the entire body you know we have two types of ghusl ghusl artemasi ghusl tartibi either you immerse the whole body at once in water or you divide body into three parts you first wash head and neck and then right side of the body and then left side of body but in any case all body must be washed those who are short-sighted may think this is a matter of cleaning body but we know that it's not cleaning body because even if your body is clean maybe you have just taken shower you know with soap and everything if one of the causes of ghusl happens and still you have to do ghusl or for example if you want to do ghusl mustahab for juma maybe you have just washed your body completely but you need to do ghusl juma again so it's obvious it is not just cleaning 
and it is obvious also that it is not just an ibadah with niyya which affects body maybe someone says no it's ibadah needs khast qurba it needs sincerity you know khulus but it is for body no it's not only for body although uh, from fiqhi perspective uh, we have attention to the body but also niyya which makes it a spiritual but from mystical perspective it's all a spiritual the bodily side is just the surface of it was is very spiritual and Ahl Ma'rifat as Imam Khomeini calls them so Orafa and people who are trying to have deep understanding of everything they have lots of discussion about this even he says one of Mashayikh he doesn't mention the name he says one of Mashayikh and it seems he refers to Ibn Arabi in Al Futuhatul Makkiya. He doesn't mention the name, but in the footnote, uh, those who have later worked on the book and you know added some footnotes, uh, they say this. So some of Mashayikh they have ten chapters about Ghus and what the wayfarer should try to uh, do to purify himself during Ghusl and they have mentioned 150 things 150 uh, conditions just for Ghusl so they have taken it very seriously so for Ahlul Ma'rifah it's very a spiritual thing and now we will have a discussion which is a detailed discussion but not 150 points but uh, still a detailed discussion but before I talk about this I should give you a kind of preparation a kind of introduction because some people may misunderstand whenever we talk about a spiritual uh, dimensions of ibadat or wajibat in general and what we need to do in order to get closer to Allah in order to remove you know arrogance and bias and ego you shouldn't think that it means that that action as such is a bad thing and you have committed a spiritual sin if you have done it okay these are two different things uh, for example we will talk inshallah next week in the next chapter about what should you do if your body or clothes have become unclean that is spiritually unclean okay but this doesn't mean that you have committed a sin or even you have done something immoral you know even it's not sin in a sense but something immoral if your body has become unclean or your clothes has become unclean no when we talk about the uh, spiritual side of cleaning it means that we use this as a point for reflection that how when body or clothes which are just something external to us because even our body is external to us yeah from philosophical perspective we know that our body is not us our body is external it can even be taken away from us so how we need to clean our external you know possessions like body and clothes then we need to realize that how important it is to clean our heart okay so in Islam in the same way that Quran has Zahir and Batin and Batin of Quran has Batin and up to 70 Batin 
uh, ibadat also have zahir and batin and this doesn't necessarily mean that <coughs> uh, what is said in batin can be literally found in zahir okay so right now for example we talk about janaba and you know as one of the causes of ghusl although ghusl is not always for janaba ghusl can be for different things ghusl we have ghusl wajib we have ghusl mustahab ghusl mustahab there are many like for laylatul jumu'ah we have ghusl for laylatul qad for many occasions we have ghusl for ziyara ghusl wajib ghusl janaba ghusl uh, for ladies in Hayes, Estehada, Nefas, Masul, Mayet, etc. There are lots of ghost, but they mainly talk about ghost al Janaba as if this is the main cause, and then they try to go into the spiritual side of it. But it should not be understood from this that, uh, for example, uh, this means that you have committed a sin uh, if you have done something that you need to do for example that the marital relation is you know a very bad thing but at the same time we have to be careful because maybe uh, we have gone too much into the physical pleasure and we need to remind ourselves of our spirituality so with this introduction now let us see what Imam Khomeini offers here he says Ahlul Ma'rifa they say that Janaba is going from the realm of Obudiya to the realm of Ghurba Vatan. Vatan means your like homeland. We are supposed to be servants of Allah. But when we are in a land in which we are strangers, we don't feel at home. Our soul is not at home. Janaba literally means to be far. You know, Quran, for example, says some neighbors are near, some neighbors are farther away. Al Jar al Junub. Junub means those who are far. Janaba means to be far. So they want to say that when we become Junub, then we are in a realm of Ghurba. We are away from our real realm. We are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they take it in this way that Janaba means to express your ego. To claim a kind of lordship. Not to act as a servant. And they say cost is to purify and clean yourself from this uh, sin, this spiritual sin, and to acknowledge your guilt. Then he says himself, so this was what Ahlul Ma'rifa say. Then he says, Nevisande Guyat means he himself says Janabat Fanaya Dar Tabiat Va Gaflate as Ruhani Yatas. Janabat means that you have totally immersed in Tabia, in physical world, in nature, in physical nature. And you have become heedless from rohaniyat, spirituality. In other words, kamal saltanat hayvaniyat va bahimiyat. 
it's when the animal side of us becomes dominant and قسل تطهیر از این خطیعه و رجوع از حکم طبیعت است قسل means you come out of tabia again you rise above the level of tabia and you enter سلطان رحمانیت the dominance where you know is dominance of رحمانیت because Allah from his Rahmaniyya blew into us that's our human side a spiritual side that's what makes us different from animals so a spiritual manners of ghost involve thinking not only about washing body which is the he says Qishra Adna this is the lowest the you know, level of course we, uh, cleaning or washing your body you need to pay attention to the inner side of heart and bottom bottom the inner layers of heart and the secrets of our inner self of spirit and that is to remove uh, authority and control of animal soul and let your humanity emerge then he makes a reference to Hazrat Adam this is a very important discussion please pay uh, careful attention as you know the story of Hazrat Adam is very very a deep a story many uh, scholars have discussed many different views and interpretations are given and even you know in Christianity also it has been very much a uh, focal point the idea of original scene etc so please pay lots of attention to this kind of mystical approach that people like Imam Khomeini have taken so he says the problem of Hazrat Adam was eating from that prohibited tree eating from that prohibited tree from mystical perspective is interpreted as eating from shajari tabiat from the tree of physical realm iqbal be dunya paying attention to uh, dunya paying attention to kathra multiplicity instead of fahda janabat is similar to eating from that tree which was prohibited to Adam and ghusl means to wash away the burden the traces the darkness the pollution of eating from that tree with water which stands for mercy of Allah which comes from the you know pillars of Arsh La salata illa betahur there is hadith that there is no salat without tahar but from a spiritual perspective they mean you need to purify yourself from that attachment to dunya which was uh, represented by eating of that prohibited tree by Adam uh, there are two hadiths that if uh, you reflect on them you find this idea has good chance 
you know maybe before that you say okay this is just a you know hypothesis but please listen to these two hadith and then I'm sure you find that there is good basis for this one hadith is in Wasa'il al-Shia uh, Shaykh Hurra Amali has quoted from Shaykh al-Saduq Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi Ja'a nafarun min al-Yahud ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam fasa'alahu a'lamuhum an masail A group of Jews went to see the Prophet and the most knowledgeable among them asked him some questions وَكَانَ فِي مَا سَأَلَّهُ One of his questions was this لَأَيَّ شَيْءٍ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِالْغْتِسَالِ مِنَ الْجِنَابَةِ وَلَمْ يَعْمُرْ بِالْغُسْلِ مِنَ الْغَائِتِ وَالْبَوْلِ Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because yes. Some, sometimes it stops, I was worried. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, he asked Rasulullah, why God asked to do ghusl when you have janaba, but didn't ask to do ghusl when you go to washroom, when you go to toilet? What's the difference? فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إن آدم عليه السلام لما أكل من الشجرة when آدم عليه السلام ate from that tree دب ذلك في أروقه وشعره وبشره that fruit was then spread in all his blood vessels in his hair in his skin because it went to his blood and circulated all over his body okay فَلَمَّا جَامَ الرَّجُلْ أَحْلَهُ خَرَجَ الْمَا مِنْ كُلِّ إِرْقٍ وَشَعْرَةٍ فِي جَسَدِ when someone becomes you know when someone has marital relation then this janaba comes from every blood vessel from hair it's like taken from entire body this is different from going to washroom because as we will see in the next hadith you eat or drink something and then goes out of your body whatever your body absorb absorb the rest goes out it came from out goes out yeah, but Janaba comes from your blood, from your body. فَأَوْجَبَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ عَلَى ذُرِّيَّتِهِ الْإِخْتِسَالَ مِنَ الْجَنَابَةِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah made wajib for progeny of Adam to do ghusl for Janaba up to the Day of Judgment. So, how can you understand this hadith Imam Khomeini's and people like him their understanding is that it means that Janaba is similar to the condition of Adam alayhi salam after eating from that tree how that you know fruit for example if it was apple how that was uh, spread all into all his body then the same happens when someone becomes Junub the next hadith is from Imam Reza alayhi salam Imam Reza alayhi salam says وَإِنَّمَا أُمِرُوا بِالْغُسْلِ مِنَ الْجِنَابَةِ People are asked to do ghusl from Janaba and not when they go to washroom because Anna al Janaba 
من نفس الانسان و هو شیء یخرج من جمیع جسده جنابه is from human beings themselves comes from the entire body but when you go to washroom لیس هو من نفس الانسان انما هو قضاء یدخل من باب و یخرج من باب it's food or drink which enters from mouth and then leaves the body it's not from body so he says Imam Khomeini says okay this is the you know the outward meaning to explain it in this way but if you want to go into deeper levels these two hadiths open a gate of understanding for us and he says قضیه شجره و اکل آدم علیه السلام از آن the story the issue of that tree and Hazrat Adam he says this is as uh, asrar ulum quran wa ahl bayt is one of the secrets of the sciences of quran of you know, teachings of the quran and ahl bayt and he says bisyari az ma'arif dar an marmuz as many you know of our teachings are you know somehow secretly mentioned in this and he says in our hadith we find reason for legislation of many acts of worship are related and connected with the issue of Hazrat Adam and eating from that tree when they explain philosophy of legislation of many acts of worship they re- refer to the story of Hazrat Adam like wuzu salat qosl fasting of the months of Ramadan and why it is 30 many things they related to the story of Adam and eating from that tree and he says for many years I had the intention of writing a book about this issue but he says my you know engagements stopped me from this and I asked God for tawfiq to write a book about this and I think he didn't manage to write this book so as summary he said you are a child of Adam and Allah has chosen you for his ma'rifa for his liqa meeting him and Allah has made you masjud of malaika someone that angels prostrate for as a son of Adam because we believe that uh, they were asked to do sajda for Adam uh, as a representative of humanity not only for Adam and when Allah said inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa also that was not only for Adam otherwise angels would not have difficulty with Adam they had difficulty with progeny of Adam was not about Adam so you are masjud malaike wa mahsud iblis how iblis satan was jealous about adam he is jealous about you now janab of adam has affected you he doesn't say it in this way but it's the result because he says agar bekhahi از جنابت پدر که اصل توست خارج شوی so it means that جناب از آدم is somehow your جناب if you want to come out of جناب of your father who is your root and become qualified for لقاء الله and be qualified for you know acquaintance with Allah سبحانه وتعالى with the water of mercy of Allah you should wash your batin you should wash your heart from what? from attention to dunya 
This attention to dunya comes from that prohibited tree. So you should repent and wash completely your heart. لا يدخل الجنة إلا الطيب. No one except those who are pure and clean can enter heaven. If you remember when we are discussing about ziyara, we had these you know several hadiths that Allah says to someone that has visited his brother in God for the sake of God. Allah says that. Uh, he has visited me and he sends also angels to this uh, this kind of people to escort them and the angels say you have become tayyib and now Jannah is suitable for you because only tayyib people can go to heaven here also we have لا يدخل الجنة إلا طيب الذين يتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين so how you can become طيب by washing your heart not just body شستشوئي كنو أنجه بخرابات خرام wash yourself and then enter kharabat kharabat is where they distribute the wine of love and you become drunk of love this is a symbolic language so you have to wash yourself alhamdulillah this chapter finished and Inshallah, we will talk about uh, Najasa. I want to add uh, just uh, one point. Uh, maybe someone says, then, what's the difference between this view and the idea of original sin in Christians? Because we say that from Islamic perspective, Adam, first of all, made Tawbah. And his toba was accepted. And at ta'ibu min adham kaman la dhambala. If someone has done proper toba, it's like has not committed a sin. And also, if Adam has committed a sin, why his progeny should be responsible? La tazir waziratun vizra ukhra. Yeah, you are not going to be punished for the sins of your parents. Yes, that's true. But it doesn't mean that what parents do would not have impact children on children. Yeah. For example, if your father or mother decide to live in a you know good place. For example, to be close to the community, you know, either in a religious environment or even if it's a religious environment, at least in a religious community and provide you with, you know, good atmosphere. They have a good relation with mu'minin, etc. So it has good impact of you. If your uh, parents don't bother about these things and you don't have contact with community, with mu'minin, you don't have religious you know gatherings etc it has impact on you you are not sinful but it has impact on you or the food that they eat especially uh, during pregnancy but even before pregnancy it has impact on children yeah so what islamically we say is that what Adam alayhi salam did has impact on us. One impact is that because of that Adam had to leave that Jannah. It was not eternal Jannah, but anyway, it was a Jannah, a special place. And Adam was asked to come down. 
to do Hobut. Okay? Yes. We, this is not a sin for us. We are not going to be punished for that, of course. It is not just if Allah punishes us for what someone else has done. Especially when he has done Tawbah. But it has impact on us. It makes us uh, different from what we could be if Adam remained in heaven. Okay, this is not uh, one point. The second point that, but this impact is not something that we cannot free ourselves from it. This is a very important point. For example, our Christian uh, uh, brothers and sisters, they say, or at least this is a very common interpretation because maybe there are other interpretations that as a result of original sin we cannot trust our intellect, our reason our reason is fallen some of them at least they say this but we say no, our reason is not affected and reason is a hoja of Allah even this, you know, coming to dunya although brings complications but we can free ourselves from it we can be completely free from any traces of darkness which was caused by this so there are similarities and maybe you know in Christianity also they you know wanted to say something like this but the way it was articulated was different uh, because sometimes there are some uh, points that m Muslim mystics have explained that are very uh, you know close to some of ideas of Christianity but without some of the implications uh, even for Trinity there can be an interpretation from m Muslim Know, mystical perspective which would not have implication of Trinity but would allow for you know different manifestations of God etc even uh, one of our close friends that some of you know in the last wings of unity referred to this mystical uh, Muslim mystics you know un understanding so this is our discussion about Ghusl and Janaba and the story of Adam alayhi salam please uh, listen to whole lecture those who are you know, watching this lecture listen to the points I mentioned at the beginning and at the end so that inshallah it becomes clear Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen My pleasure We have some time for question and answers I think so perhaps we can begin with the question that's sent on the chat mm -hmm. uh, and the question says Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Jazakallah Khair for the beautiful points yeah. so that we do not misunderstand how can we say that this condition of Janaba is a type of negligence of spirituality when the Matsumin obviously were in this condition at times can you please clarify yeah yeah so, as I said, this doesn't mean that is you know, uh, like I said, you know, when your body becomes najis, is it bad? No. Is it immoral? No. So, if someone becomes junub from halal, or for example, someone is uh, sleeping and becomes muhtal and needs us, for example, this is not haram, this is not immoral, yeah? But, it is a kind of invitation to go deeper and think what could be Janaba of the soul. Maybe this was not attention to dunya that made you Junub. But for many people, this is when they are uh, doing something worldly or maybe for you your janava is in other ways 
maybe for someone for example you know going to their ego and to their own you know shell when they see success in something else yeah so it's different but this is something that is an invitation because a spiritual people look at everything as an opportunity to remind themselves of the need for overcoming ego and going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they have tried to benefit from the hadith that we have here and the term junub for saying that we are in need of a big purification whenever we do something that can be animal you know practice can be for just animal pleasure if we don't do it for the sake of Allah if we don't do it for the right purpose or if many people do it without right you know intention and right attitude so we use this as a way to invite ourselves to become more pure otherwise as I said there is no problem actually uh, some of these things are can be even very spiritual sometimes sometimes it becomes wajib even for you but from a mystical perspective anything that you do even to respond to your physical needs even if from fiqh perspective can be wajib but it's a kind of uh, in engagement in worldly affairs even if, if you are done for the sake of God suppose I'm saying you know the maximum of it it still is a worldly engagement that you need to make sure that you paint it with remembrance of God like for example why Rasulullah says إِنَّهُ لَيُغَانُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ He says, My heart gets smoked and I give, make 70 times astaghfirullah. Ulama say, this was when Rasulullah was engaging with conversation with people, even if it was for the sake of his tabliq, but it had some impact on him. Even this much attention to kathra, the world of multiplicity has impact on his heart he feels he has to ask for forgiveness although he had to do this if he had not done it so it's a different kind of attitude in two different levels so you have to distinguish between the level of zahir and batin or the level of uh, fiqh and the level of irfan which they call it you know Akbar. and both are correct we shouldn't you know take one and reject the other one but we should not be satisfied with one we should have both I hope it's made it clear Allah, may Allah bless you the second question there's a question yes there's another question um, I think it's along the similar lines but if you want to add anything to this question, then feel free to. Yeah, I think it, this was what I answered that this can be even sometimes, you know, wajib can be sometimes uh, mustahab, can be spiritual, but with the clarification that I made. You know, even eating food, okay? Is any problem in eating food? No. Even we have to eat food, otherwise we die. But mystics, they think that if they eat food for enjoying themselves, is a problem. They try to eat food while remembering Allah. And remembering Allah it just doesn't mean to say Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim at the beginning or Alhamdulillah and at the end. No, it means that as a servant eat food and enjoy that you are able to 
use a blessing of Allah to gain energy to serve him okay uh, some of them were very strict some of them were, you know were trying not to add you know salt or uh, spices to food because they say my body needs for example the nutrition but doesn't need to be delicious sometimes you know food without salt maybe is actually healthier but <laughs> maybe no taste so sometimes they were doing like this or sometimes they were you know putting salt on watermelon or melon so that they don't enjoy the taste some mystic used to do this we are not recommending this we don't say this is what everyone should do but we should understand the point that they want to fight temptations of nafs and they don't want to take any risk uh, this is different level this is not for everyone and what we find in the sunnah of Ahlul Bayt is something that can be example for everyone but what they did in their personal life is different so many times our imams when they appeared in the public they had very nice clothes but inside was very hard uh, clothes they didn't want to enjoy you know, having very nice clothes but in the public they didn't want to give it this image that first of all you know we are ascetic or second that everyone should do like this because they are role models so we go by the general teachings but we should understand what these uh, spiritual people you know did uh, whether you want to agree or not that's another but you know we should see the point we should appreciate their interest in this and then of course we should have our mentors and our guides you know to help us thank you very much uh, yeah, well, i'm not seeing any other questions on the chat there have been plenty of messages coming through for today's uh, my class. pleasure um, so inshallah you are happy with this book inshallah Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. 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 Okay, excellent. So, so please, please go, please go and watch them because uh, there are some important discussions about you know presence of heart, you know, uh, control khayal, you know how to control your thoughts. So there are lots of beautiful discussions there, but I didn't teach this part. So I started where I had stopped. Thank you, Shabbat. May Allah bless you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أربك توعا وتمتعه فيها طبيلا وامن علينا برضاه وهب لنا رأفته ورحمته ودعاه وخيره اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولوالدي والدينا ولمن وجب له حق علينا ولمن أوصانا بالدعاء ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم 